right, folks, so we're getting ready to do our uh, blood stain stringing exercise, uh, which is stringing as a method for us to determine what's referred to as the area of origin uh, for when we have a blood spatter, typically uh, when we have medium velocity impact spatters. So we're going to be doing an exercise, and some of the supplies you're going to need to complete that exercise, uh, you're going to need a, a ruler that um, measures in millimeters in the metric. You're going to need either uh, a protractor or if you have one uh, you can use a square. A protractor like this will work just fine. You're going to need uh, a little bit of tape, some scotch tape. You're going to need uh, some scissors and a pencil, uh, some string or twine of some sort. Uh, you're also going to need a, a scientific calculator. Um, I've actually downloaded just an application on my smartphone, a scientific calculator app. If you have a scientific calculator, that'll work fine. Or even if you have your computer, uh, the Windows operating system has a calculator that you can turn into a scientific calculator. And then the last thing you're going to need is uh, this printout. Uh, and in the instructions for the assignment, there is a link to a Google slide, which is just one slide, and it's a picture of a medium velocity impact spatter that you're actually going to print out to use for the exercise. So you actually have to make a printout of it. So those are the supplies that you're going to need for this particular exercise. All right, folks, so uh, we're getting ready to start doing the stringing exercise. I wanted to, uh, to show uh, kind of how you're supposed to set up um, to actually do the exercise. Uh, you'll notice that uh, when I went through the supplies list, one of the things I mentioned you need in terms of supplies um, is a tape measure, and then I also mentioned that you needed to print uh, the photo, the digital photo of the blood spatter that's found on the Google Slides link within your assignment instructions. You're gonna actually take that photo and you're actually gonna tape it onto a wall in your home to actually do the stringing exercise. Um, now, how, how you tape the, the photo to the wall or where you tape the photo to the wall is important. Um, you, can, you can choose any room in your house, which is fine. Uh, when you tape it to the wall, uh, you're gonna tape it in a very particular position. Uh, you need to pick in your home uh, either a corner of a room or it could be a doorway or a window, what we would call a fixed point of reference, which is you know, something architecturally in the home that doesn't move. Uh, so you're gonna actually uh, attach the photo to the wall so that the bottom right-hand corner of the photo is exactly 12 inches from that fixed point of reference. So what I've chosen here is this corner here, I've measured 12 inches out from this corner to the bottom right-hand corner of the photo. In fact, if we can get our uh, cameraman to come in a little bit. You can see that on the photo itself, and you'll see this, that in the bottom right hand corner of the photo there are the words bottom right, so you can make sure that when you tape the photo of the blood spatter on the wall, you tape it in the right spot. So I've actually measured 12 inches uh, from the wall to the corner of the, the image here, and I've actually taped it to the wall. Now also in terms of how high up I've taped it, I also made sure that I measured and that the bottom right hand corner here is 36 inches up from the floor. So when I attach the photo to the wall, it's 36 inches from the floor up and it's 12 inches from the corner to the bottom right hand corner. Um, so it's important that when you attach the photo of the blood spatter that it be attached to the wall um, in, in this fashion. And the reason for that is you're going to strain the blood stain in the photo and you're going to figure out the area of origin for that particular blood stain. And you're going to report exactly where the blood would have come from within this three-dimensional space out here in front of the wall. And when you do that, when you figure it out, you're going to actually make three measurements. You're going to measure, so let's say that once we string this blood stain, let's say we determined that the area of origin where this blood came from was where my fist is located. Well, once we've figured that out, we're going to make three measurements. We're actually going to measure one measurement from the floor to where my fist is. We're going to make another measurement from the wall to where my fist is. 
And then we're going to make one more measurement from the corner to where my fist is. And that way we're able to report, within this three-dimensional space, we're able to report three measurements which triangulate the location of the blood stain. And so I know exactly where the blood in this photo came from within this three-dimensional space. And so I'm going to check to see if your measurements are accurate the way mine are. So it's important that you attach it to the wall in this manner. So that's how you get ready for the stringing exercise. All right, folks, so we have our, our blood stain uh, attached to the wall uh, where it's supposed to be. And now we're getting ready to, to string the blood stain. Uh, if we zoom on in here on our blood stain, we can see that this blood stain, and this is all from one impact spatter, but we can see that there are hundreds of blood droplets here that are all from just one impact spatter. And we certainly don't need to string all hundred blood droplets. So what we're going to do then is we're going to pick maybe three or four, maybe five if we need it, uh, drops within this stain to actually string to figure out our area of origin. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, probably four or five drops. Um, your photo is going to be the same as mine and you can do the same ones I'm doing or you can choose different ones. Uh, one of the drops I'm going to select is this one here in the top left hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and just circle it with my pen. Uh, another drop that I'm going to select is this one here. That's a pretty good one. Uh, another one I'm going to select is, uh, is this one here. I'm going to go ahead and circle it. And maybe if I'm filling up to I might want to do a fourth one. I, I might choose, what's another good one? This one here is a pretty good one right there. All right, so those are the four droplets I'm going to go ahead and, and try to string. Um, the, the photo printout, uh, some of the droplets are a little bit faint. So one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to actually take my pen and I'm going to kind of just kind of go around the outside of the droplet to kind of draw that elliptical shape there so it's going to be easier for me to make my measurements. On a stain that you actually have on the wall, you, you're not going to necessarily need to do this because you're going to be able to see it really well. But the digital printout here is not quite um, as good and so I'm just going to circle them so I can see them a little better. All right, so now what I'm going to do, the next step after I've identified which of the, the drops I'm going to string, is I want to figure out these droplets' direction of travel. And we know that whenever you have a droplet, um, that the droplet always points in the direction it's traveling towards. And we can see, if we look at all these droplets, that they're kind of spreading outwards. And so we certainly know that these droplets were traveling kind of up and out. So we know that this droplet, for example, was traveling kind of up and to the left. If we look at this droplet over here, we can see that it was going up and to the right. This droplet here was going basically straight up. So what we can do is we can actually take a ruler and we can draw a straight line right through the middle of the droplet and, and actually trace this droplet's path of travel. So it was traveling kind of up and to the left along this pathway here. This droplet, we can actually draw a straight line smack through the middle of it with our ruler. And we can see that it was traveling almost straight up and down. We can see that this droplet was traveling in about this path. This droplet here on the right, if I hold my ruler right over top of it, we can see that it was traveling kind of up and to the right. One of the things, if we were to continue these lines, and I'm not going to draw on my wall here, but if we were to continue these lines down, we would see that these lines are actually going to intersect. But that doesn't tell us um, exactly where in the three-dimensional space um, the droplets originated from. So we actually need to still do the stringing um, of this stain. But this is kind of the first step, identifying which droplets we want to in incorporate in our stringing method, uh, circling them, drawing straight lines through them, indicating direction of travel. And then the next step is going to be to actually calculate these droplets' angle of impact. So um, we uh, identified the droplets within our medium velocity impact spatter that we wanted to string in order to determine the area of origin where the blood uh, came from in our picture. Uh, so we, we identified four different droplets. Um, I, earlier I measured the droplets, I measured their length and our width, 
and then utilizing the formula that we learned about in an earlier exercise, I was able to determine the angle of impact for each of those droplets. And I'm gonna use that angle as I then string these blood stains. Um, I'm not actually gonna string all four of them. I'm just gonna string two of them in order to be able to kind of demonstrate for you the technique. But you will string at least four droplets within the stain. All right, so uh, I have a string here and I have some tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of tape and I'm going to attach it to the end of my string. And then I'm going to, if I can get my camera operator to come in a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna start with a uh, blood droplet that we've labeled number four. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, attach the string, the end of the string, right to the droplet itself. I'm gonna put the tape right over top of the droplet. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my string, remember earlier how we drew those lines there, I'm gonna line my string up with that line. So we know that the droplet was traveling along this flight path. Um, but what we need to do now is we need to get its angle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my square, uh, which is used for measuring angles, or if I needed to, I could use a protractor. I'm gonna put my square uh, against the wall, and it's gonna be in alignment with the path of travel of that blood droplet. And then I'm gonna pull my string out to the appropriate angle. Earlier I determined that this particular droplet hit at an angle of impact of about 22 degrees. And so now I have my string in the right direction and at the right angle from the wall. And I'm gonna ask my helper here to kind of hold that string in place. We don't want it to move. All right, so now we have one string. We know that the blood originated from somewhere along this pathway, but we don't know if it came from way down here or if it came from here, or if it came from here. But if we have another string attached to another drop from the same blood stain, we're gonna see that those strings actually intersect. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, attach a string to our second droplet. So earlier, as I measured this particular droplet, I determined that its angle of impact was around 20 degrees, plus or minus five degrees. So now I have a second string. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to my droplet. And again, I want it to line up along my line. And then using my square, again, I'm going to go ahead and figure out its angle of impact, which is around 20 degrees. And we notice, lo and behold, that those two strings intersect about this spot. So that means that all of these droplets, and especially these two, originated from this location within this three-dimensional space. So this location is what we would call our area of origin. So now what we need to do is we need to actually measure that area of origin. So what I need to do now is I need to take a measurement from the wall out. I need to take a measurement from the floor up. And I need to take a measurement from my fixed point of reference on the right over. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask my Assistant to go ahead and hold the strings right here, very carefully. I'm gonna take my tape measure, and I'm gonna measure from the floor up to that location. I'm gonna measure from the wall out to that location, and I'm gonna measure from the fixed point on the right to that location, and then I'm gonna record those measurements, and that's what I'm gonna actually report as my area of origin for this particular exercise. So that's how you do stringing.